Okay, I would like to partly address Joseph, or Yosef, I think it is, Matt Gruber, who commented on my most recent video, and um, he's the guy who is a uh, proponent of the Quiverful movement, who thinks that women should have as many babies as they possibly can, and he thinks the idea that there might, it might be possible to have too many people in a finite area is just uh, complete nonsense. Um, a hardcore conspiracy theorist, and I want to bring up his latest comment, um, which is a response to something I said, um, just as an example of the way the conspiratorial mindset works. Um, he left a long comment, and I responded to it with, "You missed some of the most Im you missed some of the most relevant points I made. Please reconsider what you wrote in light of the fact that the stones were designed to withstand a nuclear blast." and the fact that the writing is in so many different languages. Obviously we're talking about the Georgia Guidestones. Um, and then his response to that um, is, Leave room for nature means something sinister, as in murder excess people. Well, what else could it mean? Right there, he's not taken on board the fairly obvious... Um, idea that a monument with inscriptions was made in made out of granite uh, very large very heavy stones um, could withstand a nuclear blast um, and also the fact that they were put up during the cold war when a lot of people were worried that um, nuclear war was imminent and such a thing if it escalated um, would likely cause um, the deaths of billions of people. Um, so the idea being that there might be some people who survived and at some point in the future they may be trying to rebuild, reconstruct civilization and finding these which at that time would be ancient monuments um, left specifically for that purpose they may well have words of wisdom and um, be able to follow that. But according to Joseph MacGruber, um, he can't think of that, that that possibility isn't on his radar. And this seems to be a recurring thing among conspiracy theorists. You bring something up which legitimately undermines the cherished position they have, and it just it doesn't compute. He goes on to write, Why do you try to give those pagan enviro weirdos a pass merely for some imaginary context of the time that it was written at? How is the Cold War imaginary? I don't get where he's coming from with that. Um, he has, as I mentioned before, um, he's commented at length on a previous video of mine. Um, so he, he's, he's got a very sort of hyperbolic way of writing, um, and uh, very biased. He goes on to write, Why is it a counterfeit pagan Ten Commandments, yet it lacks divine wisdom? What is up with that? As if they intended for it to be blatant rebellion against God's commandments. Um, I already mentioned in my previous video that, um, quite a large part of the idea would be taken from the Ten Commandments. Um, I don't see how it's, it's, it's not negating the Ten Commandments. It's not saying, thou shalt steal, thou shalt murder, thou shalt covet your neighbour's ass. Or it's, it's not saying any of that. It's not contradicting the Ten Commandments. It's, it's like a, it's a separate issue, but uh, the conspiracy theorist mindset nearly always tries to conflate things to make their point, um, as well as cherry-picking the data and ignoring anything which uh, remotely uh, undermines their position. He then writes, but why only 500 million? Why not 500,000? Or why not 500 billion? 
what is so magical about 500 million? Here we go back to ecological carrying capacity. The, the very first time he commented on one of my videos, um, that was my response to him. He, he, he was, um, I can't remember exactly what he put in his comment, but it was under the Jordan Peterson video, um, which was dealing with the concept of overpopulation. And ecological carrying capacity is vitally important. Um, and uh, since then I've brought up with him the example of Easter Island out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, for a time there was a relatively large population of people there and then um, they ended up cutting down all of their trees, their population expanded, they had quite an advanced Technolo technologically advanced civilization, they were able to put up these massive stone statues and um, then sort of looking at it archaeologically quite suddenly the population drastically reduced and uh, when western explorers arrived there um, in the late middle ages the um, or was it in, I, I, I can't remember exactly when it was but if several hundred years ago um, the people that were living there were not technologically advanced and there weren't that many of them and what had happened was that they cut all of their trees down and because it's an island, a limited finite space, they didn't have the capacity or they, they lost their capacity, they, they, they didn't have ocean going ships, they weren't able to leave um, so their civilization collapsed, they probably had crop failures and that is like a, a, a small example of what a lot of people are concerned about happening with the whole world now. So it's not possible, you cannot farm um, you know, using conventional farming techniques. You have a certain, you know, 100 acres of land, I, I don't know the exact figures off the top of my head, but you cannot grow more than a certain amount of crops on that land. So if you increase the human population you know, double it, triple it, quadruple it, or, you know, increase it several hundred times as Mr. McGruber seems to think is possible. It's just not. It's, we are, humanity is already using all of the best farmland to grow crops on. Um, it's, there isn't room to expand to the level that he seems to think is possible. Anyhow, I'm going to stop this one here, but I would like to at some point soon tackle the idea of human extinction um, particularly with regard to a guy called a guy <laughs> called Guy McPherson who some of you may have heard about who has been on the TV and is absolutely convinced that we only have we have, we've have less than a decade before humanity will become extinct he predicts um, abrupt and dramatic and catastrophic climate change, collapse of civilization, failure of crops, and those are things I am worried about. Um, but I don't think that such things are inevitable or that they will inevitably happen within the next 10 years. Um, but anyway, I will go into that more next time. So thank you for watching and see you next time.